Hello, I'm here to talk about meditation. And for me, it breaks down into three different categories. Posture, stillness of body, and stillness of mind. So starting with posture, in meditation, we're trying to establish a relationship with ourself. So a relationship where we are, in a sense, independent. We are a part of a community, but we are self-reliant in a way. So meditation is a mirror for our goals. So if our goal is to be self-reliant and, um, you know, as opposed to being codependent, How do we mimic that in our posture? Well, we're not going to lean on the back of the chair while we meditate. We're going to be self-supporting. So our posture is going to reflect that. And how do we do that? How do we sit for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour with a little discomfort as possible at the same time being self, self-supporting. So the best way to do that is by having a straight spine. So our, our spine is actually stacked. So we're, we're, we're balancing ourselves. We're balancing ourselves on our pelvis. So we're, we, are, we are making ourselves structurally sound. So yes, we need to use some muscles in this, but we are giving our bones as much of the work as we can and leaving our muscles just to kind of to do a, a lesser role so we're giving we're 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 aligning ourselves to be self-supporting yes i'm using some muscles you know to, to keep things from falling apart but overall It's, it's my posture that's keeping me straight, that's keeping me aligned, that's keeping me sitting here. So posture is really important for that, but it's also important for our breath. If I'm, if I'm sitting in a hunched position, there's only so much oxygen. I'm actually limiting what my capacity is for air. For oxygen. Same thing when I'm sleeping. If, I, if I'm sleeping and I'm on my side and I'm, I'm all curled up, cozy in a fetal position, if I, in that fetal position, if I take the deepest breath I can and then I roll on my back, open my shoulders, open my heart basically, I can take in so much more air. So if I, in the natal position, taking a deep breath as far as I can, roll to my back, open my shoulders, there'll be a third to twice as much air coming in to my body. So you might say, well, big deal. What's the big deal? Well, oxygen runs the whole show, our thought processes, our digestion, our immune system, all the processes that we, that, that we, that we're, our body is constantly involved with depend on oxygen for them to work. So if I'm cutting my oxygen by like 50% or, or a third, then I'm losing half or a third of the functionality of my body. So that's something to think about when, uh, when you're thinking about posture or when, when you kind of catch yourself. You know, uh, meditation's about awareness. So in the day-to-day -day living your life, how are you carrying your body? You know, are you, are you closed? Are you open? 
Are you overly rigid? Are you, you know, where, where, where do you lie? And by bringing awareness to our posture, we can then be a choice with the amount of oxygen that we're taking in or how, how easy it is, the ease at which we can take in that oxygen in our body. So posture is really important to, to have our shoulders, you know, kind of back and down you know, our head is kind of balanced on our, on our shoulders and our shoulders are, are balanced on our spine and our spine is in alignment with our pelvis. So we are just, what I need to do with my muscle, muscles is, is, is minimal, is minimal. So that's the thing about posture and meditation. It's not about, uh, and you, can you meditate anywhere in any posture? Yes, you can. But... What is our practice? What is our goal? You know, our goal is to be self-reliant, you know, not fiercely independent. You know, we don't want to be, um, we want to still be a part of a community, but we want to be a member of that community that is self-reliant. So, so the other topic is, is stillness, stillness of body. So, how still can I be? And what, what, is, what, is, what is making me change my posture? Is it a thought? Is it, is it a, a, a discomfort? Is it an itch I have on the bottom of my foot that's driving me crazy? <laughs> Maybe. But whatever it is, I've made a decision, I've made a commitment to sit and to sit still in my body and my mind. So that's my commitment. What has the power to break my commitment? So if something has the power to break a commitment I've made, that thing, that thought, that sensation has power over me. It is driving the vehicle of my body. It is driving my life because the choices I'm making are based on an emotion, a sensation, and not on my choice or my decision on how and why to live my life. So if I'm sitting in meditation, you know, and that thought comes up, say a thought comes up about um, maybe something I said that uh, I find very embarrassing and maybe it happened a long time ago. And every time I say that, every time I say that thing, I go like, oh, oh, my, I can't believe I said, you know. So there's always a, there's always a, with the, maybe this, well, with this one memory, there's always this physical reaction, you know. So that memory, even if it's 5, 10, 30 years old, is running the show. It is controlling your body. Something that doesn't, that, that happened years ago is still active and is still controlling you. That's something to think about. Same thing with physical sensations. If uh, I have an itch on the end of my nose, am I, am I gonna succumb to that itch? Am I gonna actually break my commitment to being still to scratch my, or wiggle my nose. Same thing with an itch or, or any kind of discomfort. How committed I, am I to my stillness and to being at choice with my movement, with my thoughts? So many times I've been in meditation and, um, and have had an itch or, or a major discomfort of some kind, physical, and just bang, like a rock, no matter what happens, just, just sit there, not moving a muscle, not responding to that sensation, because that sensation is, is something else. It's not who we are. We are not our sensations. We are not our emotions. We have emotions, we have sensations, and those 
can be signals to us as, you know, to inform us to make choices. But basically, I'm making a choice to be still. How still can I be? How long can I resist motion? How long can I resist thoughts? That's like an exercise. So some people think, well, meditation, you just sit there, it's, it's easy. And, um, and that's not true. It's like playing the piano. It's like becoming a, 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 a trained artist. You are practicing. The old joke of, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, you know. So the more time I have sitting still, no matter what I think of, no matter what thought rolls through my head, I just let it roll. I don't bite on it. I don't bite on it. Whatever physical sensation arises in my body, I don't bite on it. I just let it be because I've made a commitment to stillness of body and mind, a self-reliant, self-supporting commitment to body and mind. So here I sit, still, that thought that comes to me, that usually makes me cringe, motionless, that sensation of pain, of discomfort, that usually causes me to move or shift or fidget. I give it no time. I give it no space. I just sit. I sit. And in a way, I'm proving to myself that I am not my thoughts. I am not the physical sensations that my body experiences. There's something greater within me. There's something greater at the core of my being. And I'm giving a commitment to that part of myself, to that part of myself that is greater, that is all-knowing, I'm giving that part of me time to bloom. I'm giving myself the time to learn how and where that space lives. Because it never leaves us. We can ignore that space for our entire lives. But yet, when we turn to embrace it, it rushes in. It always is waiting for us to not to open that door, to open that door. And meditation is a commitment to continually walk up to that door and knock on that door and say, I'm here. and feel that space, feel that strength. And what are the things that get in the way? What are the things that can break your meditation? The things, the thoughts that can break your meditation are the thoughts or the places that need attention. If I make this commitment, oh, I'm going to sit still, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to go for an hour, this is going to be my hour day, I'm going to do it, you know, and boom, there I am. And that one thought comes up, that one thought, you know what that thought is. And all of a sudden, bang, I'm out of there. I'm like, either, either I, I get compulsive about it and start like, Arr! or it's like, whatever the reaction is, this is about 
putting that memory, putting that physical sensation in its rightful place, which is not in control of my choices. So I'm going to sit for a little while here and um, invite you to sit with me. And to the best of your ability, you might be a person who's just starting. This might be your first introduction to meditation. So for you to uh, actually sit still, for you to actually maintain a, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind of balanced posture that, that I was talking about earlier, for you not to move at all in this, in this time, is, it might be a lot and might be too much to ask, but it's about practice. It's about practice. It's about showing up and sitting down. And a lot of people think of meditation as, I'm gonna have this fancy bell and I'm gonna have a, a cushion and there's gonna be a candle and some incense or whatever the, whatever the assumption is or the vision is of meditation. The truth is that none of that stuff is necessary. A lot of the, a lot of the ornaments or the, the ritualized uh, tools of, of meditation are there and they have evolved there. Meditation has been around for thousands of years. So, um, but at the core of it, it's just you, your thoughts, your sensations, and that deeper part of yourself, that deeper part of yourself that, that we're training ourselves to respond from. A lot of people spend time responding to, to opinions of people they respect, parents, aunts and uncles. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time responding to the news, responding to advertising, responding to external input. Oh, I better have, you know, people are gonna think this and I better have that because people are gonna think this and I better, you know, I'm gonna squeeze myself into this box so that my life is good and I'm accepted and um, I'm respected and I'm loved as opposed to finding that focus internally and connecting with that deepest part of ourself and bringing that into the world. So instead of changing ourselves to, to, to please or to gain acceptance in the external world, through meditation we're trying to, to link ourselves with that deepest part of ourselves. And then taking that deepest part of ourselves, that truth that we have, that, that, that snowflake that only we are, that, that, that tone or, or um, voice that only we have to share with the world. We are looking for that. We are looking to connect with that and bringing that into the world. So instead of I was at home yesterday and I was uh, downloading CDs into the, my computer and kind of getting things organized and I found this other thing that was really cool online and I was, oh, I gotta have that and da 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 and da, da. And what I realized was all of these things that were really cool and I felt support from, which is, I'm not knocking that, but they, were, they had nothing to do they might, have been, they might have been having a similar vibration than, than what I have to give, but they are not what I have to give. So how much time do I spend tweaking the, the vibrations of other people and how much time do I spend bringing what is inside me? my tone, my voice out to be seen and to be added to the symphony that is the world. 
So I think much more can be done if we are listening to our, to our inner strength than if we are all trying to squeeze ourselves into a vision that we're not even sure what the origin of that vision is. So sit with me. My posture is self-reliant. My body is still. My eyes are not closed. My vision is soft. So I can see the floor. I can notice the room. Color changes in the room. I want to stay connected to where I am. When we meditate and close our eyes, it can be really easy to, to drift off. And not to be grounded in our seat. So I'm going to be quiet now. and do your best. If you find yourself biting on a thought, just let it go. Take another deep breath and come back to the meditation. And always when we finish, a sense of gratitude for the experience, a sense of gratitude is a perfect way to end the meditation. And even if it's hard to come up with, what am I grateful for because of this experience? It's so very important to end the meditation with a sense of gratitude. Because just taking the action of bringing yourself to a space, focusing your attention and attempting, whether you feel like it was successful or it was a disaster, your commitment to sit and attempt to connect with that deepest part of yourself is in itself completely worthy of gratitude.